a former Merck Pharmaceutical rep who later turned into a strong advocate for vaccine education, has suddenly and strangely passed away. Brandy Vaughn is a name you might not know, but she, who used to work for Merck Pharmaceuticals, became a powerful voice in the movement for better vaccine education and the fight against mandatory vaccines across the country. She was found dead a few days ago, but what's interesting here is I actually met her almost two years ago at an event in Mexico in which she specifically talked to me about people who were speaking out against the pharmaceutical industry suddenly and mysteriously passing away, including a slew of mysterious suicides. We're gonna tell you more about Brandy Vaughn. Plus today we're talking with Scott Jensen. He is the state senator from Minnesota who has been heavily censored over his comments about COVID and had his medical license come under attack. I saw the, if you will, the bogus advice we were getting as to how to complete death certificates. I said, well, this is crazy. And then in May, I was being criticized by some of my colleagues in the Senate because they felt I was trivializing the present situation. And I'm not trying to trivialize it. I'm just trying to provide some reasonable perspective. And then June, July, August, September, I spent defending my, my license. All of it today, I'm Ben Swan, and this is Truth in Media. Hey guys, welcome to the show. A lot to get to today. And we want to start by talking about uh, Brandy Vaughn, who, as I mentioned, just passed away a few days ago. She was a terrific woman and a terrific advocate for better education about vaccines. Also, a leading voice in the fight against mandatory vaccines. And also today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk with State Senator Scott Jensen of the state of Minnesota, who himself has come under so much fire for comments he's made about COVID and just asking for common sense responses to this virus and yet has had his medical license threatened not once but twice to be taken away by the medical board there in Minnesota. We're going to get to all this in just a minute, but before we do, a shout out to our sponsor for this episode. If you want to get control of your financial life and secede from the banking system as it is today, you got to talk to my friends over at Create Tailwind. Create Tailwind will teach you the Austrian economic principle of something called infinite banking, but they're also going to teach you more than that. They're going to teach you five ways to secede from the banking system, how to break free from this system that's been set up really to rob all of us of our wealth. It is a gamed system. You probably know this by now, but the question is, how do you play the game better? Well, Create Tailwind will teach you exactly how to do that. And in the link below, there is actually a link to a 25 minute interview I did recently with the guys over at Create Tailwind. Check it out today or go to createtailwind.com. All right, so let's go back to this issue of uh, Brandy Vaughn, who, as I mentioned, was a powerful advocate speaking out against forced vaccination across the country. In fact, Brandy Vaughn was a woman who I met uh, two years ago almost at an event in Mexico called Anarchapulco. She was a speaker there and so was I. And after I spoke, she came up to me and wanted to talk about the issue of so many advocates for vaccine education and so many doctors who were speaking out against mandatory vaccines who were suddenly and mysteriously passing away, including, by the way, uh, those who would commit suicide. She would, as she told me, they would go for a walk and then suddenly decide to commit suicide while they're gone. And so she was very concerned about this issue. In fact, she was so concerned about this issue that just a year ago, she wrote a Facebook post in which she explained to people that she, despite what anyone might say about her, is not suicidal, has never been suicidal, has no exes who are out to get her, and if at any point she passes away, it should be looked into. Quote, I have never had any thoughts of taking my own life, not once, ever, even before I had my son. I have a huge mission in this life. Even when they make it very difficult and scary, I would never take my own life, period. Bastion means everything to me, and I would never leave him period. I have sole custody and he needs me as much as I need him. I would never think of leaving him for a second. I have never been on an antidepressant nor been diagnosed as depressed. Don't believe it if you ever hear anything like this. And her post goes on from there. Again, I find this very interesting because as someone who I talked to personally about this issue, Brandy was extremely concerned about the uh, underreported number of deaths of doctors and vaccine advocates who were disappearing under very strange conditions. Well, 
We should now mention that Brandy, her own death, is actually being investigated by the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office. Quote, The Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Office Monday announced it is investigating the sudden death of Brandy Vaughn, a well-known pharma whistleblower and advocate for vaccine safety who died December 7th. A spokesperson for the Sheriff's Office said in a statement that investigators won't determine the cause of Vaughn's death until the completion of a pending toxicology screening, a process that normally takes four to six weeks. Brandy's death was originally reported as resulting from gallbladder complications, but many of her friends and co-activists in the vaccine safety movement suspect foul play. Those suspicions have gained traction due to a wave of mysterious deaths, many of them violent, among alternative and integrative medical doctors in recent years. In response to this trend, Brandy made a Facebook post almost exactly a year before her death in which she said, if something were to happen to me, I have arranged for a close group of my friends to hire a team of private investigators to figure out all of the details. Now, I did not know Brandy well, but as I mentioned, her work uh, was very well known. She was a strong advocate for vaccine safety, for better education for people, and against speaking out against this idea of mandatory vaccinations, which of course, is heavily in the headlines right now. The issue of mandatory vaccines, we've been telling you for months they are on their way. There's no question now that they are. The problem, of course, is that on social media, you're so quickly censored if you speak out against anything, even if you're speaking common sense when it comes to these issues. And somebody who knows that better than just about anybody is Dr. Scott Jensen of the state of Minnesota. He has spoken out to his own detriment about the issues of what is happening across the country and certainly what is happening with the response to the COVID vaccine. Recently on RT's uh, No BS podcast, I spoke to Dr. Jensen about this and about the response that he has undergone, the attacks that he's undergone as a result of what he has said. And Scott, I, I, it's good to have you on here. I got to tell you, you post these Facebook videos where you're explaining your situation, what's been happening with you. I reshare them all the time because I think that your story is such an important story for people to hear. Uh, you are a physician and you have had now your medical license, and you can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on this, uh, challenge now twice going before the medical board because of comments that you have made about the response to coronavirus, correct? That's correct. Tell me about the comments that you made that were reported. What did you say? Well, the first time around, I was accused of spreading misinformation because I had compared COVID-19 to influenza in a fashion similar to what Dr. Fauci and Dr. Mike Osterholm in Minnesota have done. So I was astonished about that. I was also accused of uh, providing reckless advice. And that was in late June, and then that was dismissed in late July. And then in August, uh, another investigation was initiated. And that time I was identified as a, a danger to public health because I took the 2009 swine flu pandemic and tried to draw comparisons between it and our present situation in regards to a variety of features, seasonality, uh, length of time, what kinds of mitigating measures might have been tried in 2009 versus 2020. And for that, I was a danger to public health. And then that was dismissed in October. So right now, my I'm <laughs> happily not being investigated. If you say something to the contrary of what social media companies have deemed as acceptable, if you say something that's contrary about coronavirus, um, you are immediately not just censored, but threats against your livelihood, against your ability to practice medicine. I mean, it just seems you, we hear so much talk today about stand up against fascism. It seems like such a fascist idea. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I mean, I think back to March, I was attacked by bureaucrats because they said that I was minimizing the impact of COVID-19. And I simply was trying to provide context. In our country, I think a lot of folks don't realize that we have almost 10,000 people die every day in the United States. One out of 100 people in the United States dies every year. We have something in excess of 300 million people, but 3 million people die every year. These are not alarmist statements. These are not conspiratorial statements. These are facts. And so when I started being criticized in March, and then in April, I saw the 
if you will, the bogus advice we were getting as to how to complete death certificates, I said, well, this is crazy. And then in May, I was being criticized by some of my colleagues in the Senate because they felt I was trivializing the present situation. And I'm not trying to trivialize it. I'm just trying to provide some reasonable perspective. And then June, July, August, September, I spend defending my, my license. I don't think there's any question that there is a divide that is astonishing. I mean, I lived through the 1960s civil rights movement. I lived through the Vietnam peace this is remarkable. And honestly, I think one of the notable sources of blame belongs on physicians. I don't think that we have held up science at the level we should. Science is just three things. It's observation, it's measure, and then it's hypothesize. Hypo create a hypothesis that would explain what you saw and measured. And then develop an experiment to either confirm or deny your hypothesis and ask other scientists to do the same. It's at that point that we have science. But if you actually look at what we did in 2009 and look at what we're doing now, everything changed on a dime four or five months ago. There was You're no about randomized control. Yes, I'm talking about if you look at what we did with influenza with 2009 swine flu and look at what we're doing now and the mitigating policies. In 2009, we did not close schools lock, stock, and barrel. We did not lock down. Uh, we did not go crazy about the value of masks. We did not do any of these things in 2009. Everything flipped about four or five months ago, not because we had good science, randomized controlled studies, double-blinded studies, peer-reviewed studies. We had just a lot of panic and fear, and we had a lot of gobbledygook, a lot of mud thrown on the wall, and we were just picking and choosing, and everybody's saying, heavens to Betsy, the sky is falling, we've got to do something, so we're going to make a mask mandate. Fine, that's not a hill I'm going to die on, but I think if we have vulnerable people thinking that they're doing what they need to do by wearing a mask, we're hurting them, because we're actually lulling them into potential care full focus on protecting the vulnerable people. That's where your quarantines go. That's who gets the most support. But what we've done is flipped it around. We've said, we're gonna take the population of people that are least vulnerable, the zero to 30 year olds, and we're gonna lock them down. We're gonna say no school. We're gonna say no phonetics, no ability to learn how to talk and write as a six year old or a seven year old with a teacher having no mask on. What we've done, we will pay for for decades. Well, guys, that is our report for today. Be sure, by the way, if you want to get these reports sent directly to you, if you're one of the few people who gets to see this report because of the fact that, let's face it, it's on um, social media and then immediately removed because this kind of content is not allowed to live on social media, well, you can get around that. There's a number on the screen right now. If you will send me a text to that number, we will send directly to your mobile device any and all of our reports as they're done. So specifically on the content of COVID, vaccinations, if you will send me a text, we'll be able to send those reports directly to your mobile device to get around that social media censorship.